this very uh, casual representation that's also core to the story. And I think that's something that you don't often see happen, especially in, in uh, I guess, more family-geared media. And I think that it's just, especially in this time that we're living in, it's just, it's so necessary to see that now. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Thank you. I love your setup. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's a nice uh, chair. That's a nice chair. It's so comfortable. It even yeah. massages. It's fantastic. Really? Yes. Yes. I didn't know I they know. came with massages. Sorry, I'll, I'll keep us on track. Yes. It's, anyway, <laughs> 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. How does it feel? It's incredible. And that's such a um, unique, rare thing. And knowing how much love was poured into this film and seeing it reflected back from not only, you know, early viewers, but the critics as well. Um, it's just, it, it just feels like it was meant to be this way. And I, I'm just so fortunate to be a part of this project. I love this movie. It's one of my favorites of the year. It makes me oh, laugh, awesome. cry, cheer. Um, I bought the graphic novel on the way yes. from the screening to my car. Absolutely. Like, was, but I'd love to know what it was about Nimona that made you want to be a part of it. You know, I was familiar with the graphic novel prior um, to being cast, and I was a big fan of NDs with uh, She-Ra on Netflix. So, you know, that alone was a huge push for me. But knowing that this was... Uh, distinctly unapologetically queer story being brought to screen that was like the main part of why i just knew that this was a project i couldn't pass up yeah, can you talk about the importance of bringing that to screen like i have a queer daughter and she's obsessed with this you oh, know it means congratulations a lot to a lot of <laughs> thank you <laughs> um yeah i think it's so important because one the way that first of all uh this story is created by nd who his perspective already infuses it with inherent queerness. And I think that's the thing. M give more queer creators the space to create. Give them that ability. And then you can see that that effortlessly is infused into this really creative world. It's still fun. It's funny. It's action-packed. But at the same time, you have these... Um, this uh, this very uh, casual representation that's also core to the story. And I think that's something that you don't often see happen, especially in... in uh, I guess, more family geared media. And I think that it's just, especially in this time that we're living in, it's just, it's so necessary to see that now. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And the line uh, towards the end, uh, when Ballister's just like, I see you to Nimona, uh, I'm like- Destroyed me. I know. I don't cry do. about anything. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, and that got me teary eyed. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, how would you describe Golden Loin, besides having like the best name in the entire uh, I know, right? Movie, I but... love that they actually fought to keep his name Ambrosius Golden Loin. And um, really? I'm glad it stayed. Yeah, pun intended. Um, <laughs> no, I uh, really think Ambrosius is this wonderful example of the person who's torn between two worlds, which is honoring a system that they um, were essentially told is what you have to abide by, and also then honoring one's emotions and feelings and true north. And I think that that's something so many people can relate to. It's something I certainly related uh, extremely well to. And, um, you know, sometimes society tells you one thing and your soul tells you another. And in the end, you know which direction you should you should pick. Yes, I love that so much. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, I just I love this movie so much. Oh, that's and, awesome. uh, I can't wait for everyone to see it. I think it's beautiful.